What is frequency response? What are real sounds? Well, frequency response shows the decibel and degree values for various frequencies of something, okay? I can record the frequency response of my air conditioner playing in this room. You can record the frequency response of anything. What is a flat frequency response? When I hit my table here, I don't think about the peaks of the sound because all I am hearing is the sound itself, the natural timbre of the sound. The peaks associated with the sound are not considered low fidelity. In a frequency response graph, they can be considered low fidelity though because it's imparting colorations on top of the natural peaks and dips of me knocking on this table right here. But how much does this really matter? What even is a good frequency response? Does frequency response even cover things like soundstage and imaging? To answer this question, we have to think about what sound fundamentally is, energy. When you hear a piano in real life, it's not just about the sounds you're receiving at your eardrum, it's about the energy the piano creates as well. And that's what fundamentally causes the sound at your eardrum. But if you take a recording of a piano and play it over an IEM, the sound power of the piano is not reproduced at all. A recording itself does not have energy, it just stores the waveform of whatever the microphone captured, essentially. And the energy is entirely dependent on the speaker as well. So if you use an IEM, this thing is much smaller than a piano, so there's not going to be much sound energy associated with this. So regardless of how smooth the frequency response is or whatever, it's not going to match the experience of an IMAX theater or something, a good IMAX theater that is. And that's the thing. Frequency response only matters so much. There are other factors like imaging and soundstage, which if they are at such a higher caliber than what you currently have, even if you have the best tonality, it's still going to sound better than having the perfect frequency response. And that's why I think focusing more on acoustics first and these kinds of things and tonality last is the more optimal approach to go for sound quality because realistically speaking, you can equalize anything to be flat in some sense, or mo most things you can equalize them to be flat, and that's the thing. Even if something is equalized to be flat, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sound good. Because acoustics, imaging, soundstage, tactility, all of these factors play important roles. When I'm playing the opening sequence of Oppenheimer on my two speakers, for example, there's not a center channel, so I'm not able to get this center power like I would in an IMAX theater where there are speakers behind the screen actually creating physical power coming from the center. And no matter what I do with my frequency response, I can't just make something come from the center that's not there. I just have an illusion of a center channel and if I move to one side or the other, this gets crippled. And using two speakers has other issues too, which are not typically mentioned like comb filtering resulting from the sound at the right ear arriving at the left ear at a later time, and this results in a dip at around two kilohertz. And, you know, it's things like these, there's more to sound than just frequency response. And a lot of people nowadays focus a lot on frequency response, but you can get something with a questionable frequency response, but you can just equalize it to be smooth or whatever it is that you want it to be. And I wouldn't say equalize it to be smooth, actually, because you can ideally get something that is acoustically good, and if something is acoustically good, it would at least be smooth, but some broad level adjustments to make it to your desired overall level is probably the optimal way to go. And for that reason, I really don't think the frequency response of the product you get has to be to your expectations out of the box. I use equalization with all of my products. And that's the thing. Yes, frequency response matters, but anyone can do whatever they want with frequency response. There's not more I can do to the acoustics of the LSD-5. It is what it is. And yeah, frequency response is important, but make sure to put acoustics first and think about frequency response at the end. 
And some people might say that you should treat your room heavily in all of these things so the frequency response is the flattest possible it can be at the listening position. But they don't consider the point I mentioned earlier about the two kilohertz dip resulting from not having a real center channel. Actually, having reflections with only two channels makes it such that the sound that you're hearing is actually more lifelike because hearing two speakers to the sides of you simu simulating a front image in an anechoic chamber just does not work because in reality, you're supposed to have the center singer be right in front of you. There really is so much more than just frequency response measured at some location. If I were to describe audio in one sentence, it would be different frequency responses at different points in time. Because this is what ultimately matters. Me hitting the table here is not only something that is transmitted to my ears. There's also going to be sounds arriving at this place where my left hand is that you can't see, or just anywhere around, you know, within some reasonable distance. If you go far enough away, the sound is going to drop off. This, this dispersion of the loudspeaker is not necessarily the same as the real instrument. The loudspeaker does not know the dispersion of the real instrument. So you can say that the illusion of sound is good enough with two channels, and it might be, because ultimately it's about the music, how much you're enjoying the music, and whatever setup you can use to increase that is the best. And I don't think about IEMs when I think about the best experiences I've had with audio. It's probably going to IMAX theater, a JBL IMAX theater to watch Interstellar. The frequency response would not be as quote unquote smooth when measured on a coupler, like the variations or even on an omnidirectional microphone, it won't be as smooth as my setup behind me, but it still sounds better because you have this huge hall of sound with these speakers right behind the cinema screen, two huge subwoofers in the corners, speakers all around creating this amazing sound field. There are no center, I mean, there are no ceiling ch channels in IMAX, but it's still better than having just two channels and then you can go to Dolby Cinema and have all these speakers around you. And this is the most important part. And if you want to address the tonality, this is not that hard. It's probably the easiest part out of all of the steps to make an amazing sound experience, realistically speaking. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the topic of how much frequency response actually matters.